One of these men made headlines when he started out looking for treasure and ended up as a guest of Fidel Castro. What is your name, please? My name is Bernie Nistad. My name is Bernie Nistad. My name is Bernie Nistad. Only one of these men is the real Bernie Nistad. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, one of the fairest of the My Fair Ladies, Sally Ann Howes, Johnny Carson, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Sally Ann, it's a real treat to welcome you to our show tonight. Well, thank you, Bud. It's great to be here. Very unusual. I usually watch this um, show sitting on the bed. Sally Ann. Go ahead, down and make yourself comfortable. Sir. Will you open your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read? I, Bernie Nistad, am a former member of an ill-fated treasure hunting expedition. On April 1st, we sailed from Florida, bound for Jamaica, British West Indies, to search for a sunken Spanish galleon loaded with gold. Just after midnight, three days out, our boat struck a reef off Cuba's Oriente province and sank in ten minutes. We all made it to shore and reported to the authorities. We were questioned intensively for two days. Then, apparently convinced that we were telling the truth, the Cubans put us up in a swank hotel with full guest privileges and the run of Havana. Signed, Bernie Nistan. <laughs> Panel, as you see and as you heard, as did I, you have three gentlemen here, each claiming to be Bernie Nistad, intrepid treasure hunter. And uh, we'll start this first round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. It's fascinating to meet one of you fellas, because, of course, we've all read about this. Um, number one, what is the capital of Jamaica? Kingston. Number two, what were you wearing when you were captured? A pair of old slacks and a shirt. Number three, how many of you were there? Seven. Number one, how many were there? Seven. Seven. Number two, what do you wear when you, when you sink for sunken treasure? When you hunt for... <laughs> <You> sink. <laughs> <laughs> What do you wear? Uh, a wetsuit, fins, uh, regulator with uh, cans, and that's all. And number one, do you have any kind of uh, equipment on your back? Yes, uh, tanks. And how much air does this tank hold? 71.2 cubic feet. Thank you. Glad to know exactly. Tom. Thank you. Uh, number three, what piece of uh, skin diving or aqualung equipment does Loper manufacture? You've got me there. I don't know. Do you know number two? Loper no, I, Incorporated? I never heard of Loper Incorporated. How about you, number one? No, I don't believe I know. <laughs> so puzzled. <laughs> uh, number two, you were wearing dungarees and so forth. How did they assume that you were undersea demolition experts, etc.? Well, when we came uh, ashore, we had brought a, two rafts, one of bolts and one of a, uh, a rubber raft, and with some supplies in it, which we saved from the ship. And... Uh, there was saw these things in there. Well, thank you. Number three, would you answer that exactly that same way? Yes, I would. That's how they assumed you were undersea demolition right. experts? Right. <clears throat> Sally Ann. Number two, what was the treasure you were looking for? Uh, gold. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> we're not revealing that. <laughs> um, uh, what map did you use? What made you uh, look for the treasure? We had heard uh, that it was in a certain area. Um, number three, what was the name of the hotel that you stayed at? Hotel Riviera. Uh, number one, what hotel did you stay at? The Riviera. Uh, number two, um, do you dive? You mean in the water I mean, uh, like a swan <laughs> dive or anything into the water? With our gear on? No, I hope not. Well, I'm sure I can dive in the water. Uh, number three, do you do a swan dive? Swan dive? Yes. No, he's been I never have. I have my own reasons, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> we, we got a live one tonight. <laughs> number, uh, number two, what, is, what does scuba mean? Uh, I just lost it for a second. 
Uh, number three, what does scuba mean? Uh, scuba, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Uh -huh. All right, uh, number one, who invented the uh, aqua lung? I don't know. Excuse me? I don't know. Number two, do you know? Jacques Cousteau. Cousteau? Jacques Cousteau. No. That's it. Time is gone. We better make for the surface now, if you will, please, with the ballots dry and the pencils too, and let's get to our own unsunken treasure as we mark our ballots. So, will you kindly do so now, panel? Mark your ballots without consultation. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. As is customary, our team of challengers will get the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? All right, Thomas, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, bud. And I'll tell you, <laughs> if number two forgot what scuba means, that's fine. But if, he, if he's really the right one, it's too slippery for me, right? <laughs> So I voted for number three. Sally Ann, which one do you think is the real well, one? Well, I find it very hard, but um, as they were looking for gold, I think I vote for number two because he has a gleam in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, what is your selection? I voted for number three. Uh, now, number two, uh, at least didn't recall scuba, although he probably knows what it means. And I voted for number three because he can also do a swan dive. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't do a swan dive. We well, couldn't. You voted for the wrong reason, no doubt. Kitty. Well, I voted for number one because um, he has a tan, and I think maybe he got a tan in Florida. And he looks like a fellow who could go down and his ears kind of stick out. I don't know. <laughs> Spent there, you understand. I like sticky out here. <laughs> Call them thin for this thin, round, if yes. you will, please. All right, there we have the votes all in. Mike's made up, but I'll see if we can swim to some kind of truth here <laughs> on the surface of the water. As you learn which of these gentlemen is the real intrepid treasure hunter and recent guest of Cuba. So will the real Bernie Nistad please Number stand three. up? Number three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much, and congratulations. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Edmund Lamb. I'm with Anthony B. Cassidy Associates, Management Engineers. Thank you. <laughs> and number two, may we have your real name and what you do, please? My name is Michael Herman, and I'm with D.B. Marin and Company, members of the New York Stock Exchange. Thank you. we check the score, we find there were two correct and two incorrect votes, and at $250 each, that is a total of $500, gentlemen. Add that to the good time I hope you had. You gave us a good time, and that's not bad for an evening, I'm sure. That is, of course, <laughs> 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 covering up his ears over there. Uh, from Salem Cigarettes, all this, as well as a carton of Salem for each of you. Thank you, gentlemen, for sharing your evening with us. Good night, and God bless you. The next 60 seconds are guaranteed to put you in a refreshing state of mind. What? Our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Barbara Mellon. I'm secretary to Shirley McLean. My name is Barbara Mellon. I'm secretary to Marilyn Monroe. My name is Barbara Mellon. I'm secretary to Kim Novak. Well, that should be confusing, panel. So will you follow along for some clarity on the situation as I read you my copy of this affidavit? I, Barbara Mellon, am secretary to a film star. She and I have been friends since we were kids. We lived on the same block, went to grammar school and high school together. I handle her mail, appointments, phone calls, and act as traveling companion. Together, we have traveled thousands of miles, both here and abroad. Signed. Barbara Mellon. <laughs> now, panel, perhaps I'd best repeat to clear things up a little bit, as you heard. Uh, Barbara Mellon, number one, claims to be secretary to Shirley MacLaine. Barbara Mellon, number two, claims to be secretary to Marilyn Monroe. 
And Barbara Mellon, number three, claims to be secretary to Kim Novak. So that bit of enlightening repetition. Let's start this cross-examination with Sally Ann Howe. Down. Thank you, Grant. Well, all I can say is I'm very glad that not, not one of them is my husband's secretary. They're all far too pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, number one, uh, what is the name of Shirley MacLaine's daughter? Stephanie. Uh, where does, um, number two, uh, where does Shirley MacLaine's daughter go to school? I don't have any... Number idea. three, where does Shirley MacLaine's daughter go to school? You see, they claim to be no, secretary there are other somebody secretary. else. I work Barbara, with you. number two. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Marilyn I'm Rowe and the... Oh, it's a great beginning. <laughs> 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 well, I can see I'm only going to be able to be allowed back on password. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go ahead. Turn it on. Um, number two. What is Marilyn Monroe's master's name? <laughs> David Brown. Uh, it's a gentleman. <laughs> I have a whole oh, long very list. Much I make a it gentleman. Uh, I hope so, anyway. Johnny. <laughs> yes. Where do you get these nutty questions? <laughs> well, I'll have to think of something. Uh, uh, <laughs> number, uh, number three, what's Kim Novak's real name? Marilyn Novak. Marilyn Novak. Uh, number two, what's Marilyn Monroe's real name? Norma Jean Baker. Norma Jean. Number one, what's Shirley MacLaine's real name? Shirley MacLaine Beatty. Uh, number three, uh, what is Kim Novak's uh, favorite color? Lavender. Does she have lavender bed sheets like you like you read in the in the in the no. magazines? No. Oh, she doesn't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, Johnny. Uh, no, number two, what, what does Marilyn do uh, for relaxation? I mean, when she's not. I mean, <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, there isn't time to There's rephrase. No time. Well, Kitty. Just, uh, well, talk about me having nutty questions. Well, well ask you the girl. <laughs> Number one, what is Shirley MacLaine's husband's name? Steve Park. And where does he live? Mostly in Japan. Uh, number two, um, uh, is it true that David, uh, whatever his name is, is a gentleman, my sir? No. It's not a girl's name? No. No. Uh, number three, um, where is Kim Novak now? In New York. And where did you go to school with her? Uh, Penn Grammar School, Farragut High School. Where's that? In Chicago. Thank Thomas. You. I didn't get much chance. Oh, uh, I'm going to disqualify myself, but I'm oh. sorry to say. Oh. Anybody like my time? I've been asking <laughs> the question too. Okay, that will count when the votes are counted as, a, as an incorrect vote, then, in the totaling up of the score. All right. And it is time to vote. No further time for questions and definitely no chance for consultation as you mark your ballots now. Voting as you do for number one, number two, or number three. Uh, I haven't read them. Um, well, all right. <laughs> all ballots marked? And so since Tom disqualified his vote, uh, Sally Ann, we start with you. For whom yes. did you vote? Um, you start with me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I have... Um, I. I know Shirley MacLaine in New York, and I must say, I don't know her out on the coast, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I've never met number one with her. <laughs> Sounds peculiar. Uh, certainly, Marilyn Monroe's masseurs is not, as far as I know, David Burns. I thought that was a comedian. And um, so I vote for number three. Well. <laughs> Finally. Okay, Johnny, your vote, please. <laughs> Her, I don't understand at all. <laughs> uh, well, I really didn't get enough questions to, to make a fair guess. I'm just going to go for number two. Um, You're going to go for number two or vote for number two? Uh, well, you got, a, you got a point there, too. Uh, I'll vote for number two. Kitty. I voted for number three. I think they're all extraordinarily well briefed, even though you didn't like David Byrne for the master. Um, <laughs> I voted for number three because I think she looks uh, very efficient and charming. All right, there we have I'm it. I'm not then. going back to the years again. Two threes <laughs> and one two. No, I wouldn't. I'd stay away from that. Yeah. Okay. And so there we have it. Uh, at the point of truth, let's find out how right or wrong our voting has been as we learn which one of these three ladies is uh, the real Barbara Mellon. And to do that, we're going to introduce you to, although she needs no introduction, Barbara Mellon's boss. And here she is, Miss Kim Novak. Oh, I got it! Oh, 
Tim, may I thank you very much for letting us borrow Barbara for the, for the show. We know how busy you uh, must oh, be right well, now. Well, I got a kick out of it because I had a chance to get nervous over someone else instead of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous all day thinking she was going to be on television. I understand, right? Quite exciting. You have, uh, I think, two pictures opening at about the same time, don't yes, you? Yes, I've got what two, um, Boy's Night Out and Notorious Nine Lady. Both of them are coming out. Boy, at the same time. Well, uh -huh. best of good luck and success. Hope they're out there in the uh, Academy Awards. Thank you. <laughs> Find out about your two compatriots there. Uh, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, my name is Jean Mabry. I own a restaurant called The Chicken Rib in Greenwich Village. <laughs> <laughs> How do you taste the explosion? Number two, your real name and what you do, please? Kathy Pennock, and I'm a product demonstrator here in New York. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we checked the score, and totaling in, uh, Tom's disqualified one as a... Uh, as a, a, an incorrect vote. Incidentally, Tom, uh, well, what, uh, uh, what was your reason? You see, quite by accident, uh, while I was backstage, as, uh, as I was coming into the theater, I overheard someone ask for Miss Novak. Now, ordinarily, you know, I wouldn't have paid too much attention. But somebody later said, you mean Kim Novak? And by that time, I felt that I had a disqualify, and especially when I saw the, the thing, you I knew that... You put two and two together. Sure, because I didn't figure that Miss McLean and Miss Monroe and Miss Novak would all be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> be nice it would have been quite a theater full. All right, so we have then two incorrect votes at $250 each, ladies, for a total of $500. Not too bad, I'm sure you'll agree. And we thank you so much for gracing our show with your lovely presence. Good night. God bless you. Pick up your carton of Salem cigarettes. Yeah. All right. Right about here, you are scheduled for a very refreshing journey into springtime. Now, may I present our third team of challengers? What is your name, please? My name is Pierre Saint Amand. My name is Pierre Saint Amand. My name is Pierre St. Amand. Follow along with this third affidavit, if you will, please, panel. I, Pierre St. Amand, am a civilian scientist for the United States Navy. Currently, I head a project to study the porpoise. Among other things, we are interested in how porpoises communicate with each other. We taught one female porpoise to recognize words like ball, hat, ring, and stick, and then to fetch the proper object on voice command. Also, when tape recordings of porpoise sounds are played back at a slower speed, they are sometimes found to be mimicking their human associates with laughter, isolated words, and numbers, and even phrases like, go get the fish. <laughs> there seems to be no doubt that porpoises talk to each other and even talk to us. The problem is, we haven't yet learned to understand them. Signed, Pierre St. Amand. <laughs> gentlemen this time panel each claiming as you heard to be Pierre St. Amand Navy scientist working with porpoises and we'll start with our own porpoise uh, Johnny Carson uh, number number two what's the difference between a porpoise and a dolphin I think the words can be used interchangeably oh well, they can I think so I see number three is is a porpoise a fish or is it, is it a mammal it's a mammal they give birth mm -hmm. live don't they I mean Indeed they do uh-huh. <laughs> Number one, why do you want to find out why they're talking? Uh, it helps in communications and it helps in sonar investigation. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful if you found out they didn't like you when you, you finally <laughs> learned to understand them? <laughs> right, thank you. Kitty. It's my turn. Number one, uh, it says here that they, they can be taught to recognize words, but Seals can be made to play my country tis of thee on those horns with words. What's the difference? And porpoises are supposed to be so much more intelligent. Seals do not speak, do not make phrases. They just make one sound. I see. When you get these sounds, number two, are they taken underwater? They can be recorded underwater or in the air. Number three, where is your laboratory? 
at Port Magoo, California. Number one, do you agree with porpoise and dolphin are interchangeable? They are, except the dolphin is also a fish. Dolphin ah. also a fish. Number three, can you explain that last remark? A uh, dolphin is a mammal. And a porpoise? And a porpoise is a mammal. And how can a dolphin be a fish? <laughs> well, there is a, 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 a species of, uh, of fish off the Florida coast, which is sometimes uh, 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 inadvertently referred to as being a dolphin. Actually, that is not uh, 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 any relation to the dolphin that we're discussing now. Dolphins and porpoises are a part of the whale family. Thank you. Number two. Mammals. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Number two, how come uh, do uh, uh, porpoises aren't uh, devoured by sharks and uh, other game fish? Well, they're very fast, and they, they can also fight with sharks very successfully. Fight oh, with yeah. them? You know, I've heard, actually heard a uh, dolphin, I mean, a porpoise talk. Sounds like a recording machine going backwards. Oh, I shouldn't say that, anyway. Um, <laughs> number one, <laughs> how long does it take to train a porpoise? Number one. Number one. Number one. About six weeks. Six weeks. Um, number two. <laughs> What's all along? Don't let him bother you, sir. I'm not going to be put off. <laughs> number two. How long does a porpoise live? About 30 years, I think. 30 years? Well, that's all the time we have. Not 30 <laughs> years, but at the moment it is time enough for us to mark our balance, I trust. So will you kindly do so? Look how smart they are. No time for questions and no consultation. Mark your ballot now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? I'm not, I'm not marked, uh, Bud. Will I'm you? Too, I'm too confused by those point magooers. <laughs> well, what the heck? All uh, right. For whom, Tom? Well, as an old Francophile, <laughs> I heard the first gentleman pronounce his name Saint Armand, and that would be how they pronounce it if he was also a Francophile. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Ann, which one did you select? Well, I really vote for number four, but... <laughs> 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 but uh, as I have to make up my mind, uh, I was so impressed with that very long speech by number three, so I vote for number three. I was too. I must have. All right. Been. Johnny. <laughs> I went with number one, uh, one this time, because uh, he said the porpoise is also a, a, uh, uh, a ma uh, Yes, yes, he did. Well, what he said about the mammal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I voted for number that? one because when I said that seals could talk as well as ma as well as dolphins or porpoises, <laughs> he leapt to the defense of the dolphin and the porpoise. So that I felt that he had a, a, a something at stake. Kind of got you right yes, here. Yes, exactly. It? <laughs> so I voted for number one. All right, there's the roundup. Two, one, 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 and three. All right, let's see what we have by way of truth. And we learn right now which one of these gentlemen is the real like Navy scientist. So will the real Pierre Saint Amand please Smiley. stand up? <laughs> ah! Normally, I might say the panel was skunked, but <laughs> I have to say they were porpoised. <laughs> I hope those porpoid trust him more than we do. Let's say, let's say that you were, you were dolphined on porpoise. <laughs> All right. Number one, did you tell us your real name and what you really do? You got most of the votes. My name is Sidney Licht. I'm a physician from New Haven and a curator at Yale Medical Library. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, your real name and what you do, please, sir. My name is Bill Barber, and I'm associated with the Fleming H. Ravel Book Publishing Company, publishers of Bud Collier's new book, Thou Shalt Not Fear, which I'm real glad to say is selling now at the rate of a thousand copies a day across the country. Oh, <laughs> oh well, thanks very much. And checking up on the score, we find there were one, two, three, four in votes, gentlemen. That is a total of $1,000 from Salem cigarettes. You can catch a lot of poor pie with that amount of money, as well as a carton of Salem's for each of you. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night and God bless you. Now, here is how you can get relief from headache pain.
Jimmy, that's all the time we have for tonight, but we've swum well, I think, and we've all had a good time. Good night, panel. Good night, night Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. been brought to you tonight by Salem, the cigarette that refreshes your taste. Johnny Olson saying good night for To Tell the Truth, this program was pre-recorded.